Welcome back. In this video, we'll explore how to determine what the current concentrations and pressures indicate about whether a system is at equilibrium, or if it's not at equilibrium, which direction the reaction will shift in order to reach equilibrium. Equilibrium is kind of the lowest point, the downhill point for any reaction. So if a reaction is not at equilibrium, which way will it roll to reach that downhill point? In order to answer this question, we're going to introduce a new variable or value. We're calling it the reaction quotient, and it's symbolized by a capital letter Q. The reaction quotient is solved exactly the same way that you would solve for the equilibrium constant K. So you use the same equilibrium constant expression, but the difference is that instead of using equilibrium values to calculate Q, you use the current concentration values, whatever they are. So you plug those current concentration values into the equilibrium constant expression, and that'll give you your value of Q. Now once you have your value of Q, what does that tell you? Which way does the reaction need to go to reach equilibrium? In order to do that, we need to compare the values of K to the value of Q for the current concentrations. If the value of K is greater than Q, the reaction will shift to the right. And if you keep this comparison in the same direction, where K alphabetically comes before Q, then you can see that K is greater than Q tells us that the reaction shifts to the right. Now, from a chemistry standpoint, what does that mean that the reaction is shifting to the right? If K is larger than Q, that means that Q is too small. Q does not have enough products present yet. So what's going to happen is the reaction will shift to form more products. It'll shift to the right to get more products. And that'll increase the value of Q until Q is equal to K. When the values of K and Q are equal, that means that your system is at equilibrium already. If you calculate Q and you find that K is smaller than Q, that means that the reaction is going to shift to the left to reach equilibrium. So if K is smaller than Q, the reaction shifts to the left. What this means from a chemical standpoint is that in the current situation, there's more products than there need to be at equilibrium. So in order to decrease the amount of products, the reverse reaction is going to take place. It's going to shift to the left, and you're going to decrease the amount of products and increase the amount of reactants.